Before we get started, hello, hello, thank you for being here. I'm Megan. Uh, our podcast is called Mompreneur Guide, and we're all about helping mompreneurs be both present and productive. That's the topic of our podcast. But today we get to do something special, something I've never done before, which is I got to do homework. <laughs> I get to watch all these amazing films. I get to find a through line between our podcast and many different topics. And so today, that's what we're going to touch on, is a very important conversation on agency and taking action. And we're going to learn a lot along the way, not only with amazing females doing amazing work and spreading their missions and their messages um, in this film documentary space, but we're going to have just some candid conversations, too, about the films that they made and, and how we can all connect with them. So very excited, very honored to have you guys here. Uh, I'm going to sit down and get started, and uh, if anybody has questions by the end, if we have time, I'm going to have people raise their hands and I'll repeat them back. No pressure, though. No pressure. All right? Cool. All right, and I'm going to do my little intro so you guys get to hear what it's like when I'm really, really working, really working in our studio right down the street. Um, all right, here we go. Hello, my amazing mompreneurs. Welcome to the Mompreneur Guide podcast. Today is a special day, as I just told our live audience here. We are doing something I've never done before. I have a live panel. We're here at the Chagrin Documentary Film Festival, and I have five amazing women here who have created these documentaries that I'm blown away by from the different stories, the different angles, the video. For me, the audio was interesting to hear and see too. It's so amazing to see these productions that have taken time, heart, effort, and to be able to share and speak with them. So I'm gonna have each of you intro, and then I'm gonna give my little, since I got to watch every one of them, I'd like to give my little uh, take on, on what you guys have done and created. So Kelly, would you like to start, intro yourself so people know who you are? Hi, um, my name is Kelly Wolf Griffith. Um, I am a producer, filmmaker, a uh, podcast producer. I do a bunch of different stuff. Um, I own Wolf Vision Productions, and I am just so happy to be here at this amazing film festival that's specifically for documentaries. So thank you for having me on this beautiful podcast. Wonderful. Go ahead, Meg. Hi, everyone. My name is Meg Vogel, and I'm a visual journalist and documentary filmmaker. And this is actually my first time being at a film festival, so I'm really excited and can't imagine a more welcoming and wonderful place to be to show my first film. So, Congrats. Go ahead, Stephanie. I'm Stephanie Dotlow. I am an executive producer and producer. I um, have my, can my companies are Beta Candy and Endora Media, and the film that I made was um, Williams and Mansell um, Red Flag. Hey everyone, my name's Imagine. I'm the director and producer of At Your Cervix. Uh, for 25 years, I've also been a sexuality educator. I'm an author. Um, so everything I do really is focused on bodily autonomy, sexual agency, which I know is a topic you want to talk about today. Um, and that's my partner in crime, who I've known for over 30 years because we went to college together. So here we are. <laughs> Hi, I'm Renee Bergen. Um, I am co producer. A cinematographer and editor for the film At Your Cervix. I'm also a documentary filmmaker of many other films that I've been doing for the last, I don't know, 25 years. I'm also a performer in New York City. Oh, that's a fun fact. <laughs> so I get to be in front of the camera actually. behind it. I love it. That's a really cool duality there. Well, I'm so excited, like I said, um, you know, seeing all of the different topics. I was like, oh my goodness, how, what, how are we gonna make this all work? But as I w watched each film and dove in, I was taking my notes as I do, which you'll see me do a lot today, and I just noticed that like this conversation of agency, which is very potent in the world that I'm in. As a mompreneur, our goal is to run our businesses because we wanna be fulfilled and we have a mission and a message we wanna spread, just like you and your documentaries, but we also want that freedom to be around for our families. And so that agency is very clear. And Kelly, I actually watched Jump Genius first, which was an amazing story about this man. Thank um, you. Yes, <laughs> locally here in Canton, correct? It's Canton? Uh, Akron area, yes. yes. That sphere. And um, that was fascinating because this gentleman, Damon, he goes to salvage yards and he finds things that most people would think is junk, but he is the Google of junk because he actually knows its value or sees its value in form of art. And what struck me and, and what the conversation of agency started with for me there is the response of his family and friends is, 
he just gets to do what he loves all day long and he lives his life that way, which I think we can all nod our heads. Do you feel like you have that same agency as well with, with the work yeah. that you do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I just thought that was so cool to see because that is very much the sentiment in the industry that I'm in is that you have that agency. And um, from there, I moved on to At Your Cervix, which, I mean, in your spiel and in your beginning, we talked all about agency. And your film just absolutely blew me away. Um, for those of you who have not seen it yet, you need to. Uh, the story is about, and correct me if I don't say these details exactly correct, but this is my version of, of understanding it. If you are an anesthetized woman in a teaching hospital, or can it really be any hospital? It could be any hospital. Any hospital. Okay, I thought it was just teaching. Uh, you can be having a surgery on your knee, and people, the teaching residents, residents is the correct term, and right? Students. And students, yeah, can just line up and give everybody pap smears without any consent. Yeah, not free pap to. smear as much, but they will practice their pelvic exam skills. Okay. Sometimes they'll be wanting to uh, have an experience of sensing, being able to palpate some kind of pathology that might be in the body. Um, generally, that happens prior to someone going in for surgery. It's most typical in OBGYN surgery, but as you saw in the film, many cases where it's about parts of the body that have nothing to do with that. Um, and most of the time done without consent in the name of medical education, and it's not for the patient's benefit. Um, And we also know that it happens for all intimate exams, so that includes like rectal and prostate exams, although the focus of the film is is the history of pelvic exams and why we think that exists now. So just a quick follow-up. So while we do focus on pelvic exams and the OBGYN world, Uh, In the film, it's a bigger commentary about lack of consent in the medical institution, regardless of gender, and also about medical sexual assault. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, that blew me away because the dichotomy between Damon having agency and and doing these cool things to women not having agency and not having consent and being blown away like, I haven't had any other surgeries, I've had my children and that's it, but knowing that even somebody I know this could have happened to without them even knowing. I mean, you had women who ended up finding out that this happened, but had they not have been hurt in the process or been told that something was wrong and then been like, how would you know that? They wouldn't know. And so that blew me away. I mean, I don't want to digress too much, but I've actually recently heard of a woman that while she was giving birth and her husband was in the room with her, a bunch of students were wheeled in and told to do this. And she's in a position where I mean, you're in a position where you're just kind of in shock, (laughs) you know, and her husband too. So it's not only while you're asleep. Yeah, okay, so I mean, even more mind blown in terms of agency and consent. Um, And then Stephanie, I got to hear more about your story and agency with this man in Formula One and not having the typical bandwidth and opportunity or the agency at his age to do what he loves and Eventually, he fought through that. He had he was able to go at it again and again, and, and received great success for that. Do you want to talk about any other agency that I may have missed in that? Um, yeah, I think that is really you know what it's about. I think part of it too for him it was going after your dreams and really really pursuing that and having that agency really came through some people believing in him. So it he needed to have that support. He needed to have somebody who actually saw the opportunity. Otherwise, this amazing talent would have been completely wasted. Mm-hmm. And just that perseverance, um, you know, sometimes it just takes one person believing you and listening to you if you keep pursuing and going after it, and it makes all the difference in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of us can attest to that, right? And people who have helped us along our way and made things possible. So. And then Meg, when I watch yours, again, talk about lack of agency, uh, American Hostage, all about these two gentlemen who were taken hostage in Yemen and for over six months, six and a half months, well, one made it out, um, they, they had no agency. They were locked in a room with no light. Um, that had to have been jarring to see, especially a dichotomy of hopefully your own life and, and having your own agency. Do you want to speak to that at all? Absolutely. I mean, just hearing all of the films that we're representing is like really the gamut of, <laughs> right? I told you it was quite the span. I was yeah. like, oh gosh, how is mine going to fit into <laughs> this? It's uh, two men who are military contractors who are looking at a very big paycheck to go and work in a, in a very risky war zone. And it the risks are that you might not make it home. And it, it was this whole idea of them being more of a pawn for American diplomacy. 
and this is a form of terrorism that we don't really talk about, and we don't really look at military contractors as people who are spreading the American diplomacy, but um, unfortunately there have been more contractors that have died than actual servicemen and women. And um, so this film really examines the story of just a guy from Tennessee and trying to make, just trying to make it good for his family and then being in a prison cell. So mm -hmm. no agency there mm -hmm. whatsoever. Yeah. I think it would be really cool to hear because uh, about agency in, in your own lives, in your filmmaking, um, maybe ways that you've gotten to take risks or done something different that goes against the mold. I know each of you have worked so hard and so long on your projects, which again, for my listeners who have their own businesses, something that we can relate in day in and day out is just keeping at the grind of what you love to do and, and spreading an important mis mission and message. So what if each of you got to, to share a little bit about maybe a story or an example where in your work um, you've had agency that maybe other people haven't had or that you had to push to get? Whoever would like to start, something pops to your mind. Anyone? I hope I'm answering your question right. But There's no wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, between being a freelance filmmaker in New York City or wherever I've lived and a performer for over 25 years, I what I've learned over the years and skill set I guess I have now, uh, but it still just shocks me sometimes with the responses I get is that I always have to fight for the value of my time, mm -hmm. that my value and my worth is what that price is that I'm putting on it. And people, particularly with a performance situation where the, all they see is like, the 20 minutes you're on stage or when you're out, it's like, no, 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 no. It's all the classes, it's the costumes, it's the makeup. Same thing with filmmaking. It's the thousands of dollars of gear that I'm bringing. It's not just the, you know, one little bit that I'm filming for you. So um, I just remember, I don't feel as much now because I've gotten better at it, but there was a time in my life where I was just like, God, I'm always just like struggling to like really like express the value of my worth and, and, and take those risks where I'm gonna be like, no, this is what my time's worth and if you don't want me, then don't hire me. Look for somebody else, meaning I'm not gonna get some money, but it's not until you start doing that that you get that value and that economic uh, or financial, I don't wanna say gain, but response, it's like, uh, I don't feel like I'm speaking very well right you now. You are totally speaking um, well. <laughs> you know, but you know what I'm saying, it's, yeah. it's like, you know, you have to, kind of continually fight that battle to then get that and be okay with saying no sometimes because you know what you are worth. Mm -hmm. So does I, that answer your question? Percent. This is a okay. conversation we have often on the <laughs> podcast. Is, right? is that, first off, women and self-worth yes. and, and finding our worthiness, I hate that it's something I struggle with and something I have a daughter and a son that I wanna instill in them all the time. And it's it's a shame that it's something we have to battle with all the time. but. Um, it, it's it's so hard when you have to put a value on your worth in terms of your work, right? And so to hear you ha say that you had to learn how to fight for the value of your time and express your value even when there's risk. Mm -hmm. Have each of you, I'm assuming, have experienced that as have I, yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anybody in the audience, have you expressed that? Yeah, okay, so we're all in agreement, <laughs> but isn't it an interesting struggle again, no matter the different topics or the different things that we're doing that we all struggle with? and. Can do, can you each give an expression of maybe how you've worked past that? Because I think it's helpful when you hear from people of what they've done to get past it, or I think it's honestly a practice that we have to keep working towards, right, as you hit new levels. I mean, just one quick thing I'll say is yeah. I tell people, sure, that you can find it cheaper, but it won't be as good mm -hmm. as me. Mm -hmm. And I bring a lot to the table, not just as an editor, but I when I shoot, I because I'm an editor, when I shoot, I shoot, I think of what would the editor want. When I'm an editor, I think about what the producer or director want. I give my opinions <laughs> and I know when to take, you know, just yeah. be said no, okay, that's great, but I bring a lot of value and experience to the table and that's what I tell clients when I say, you know, you're getting this from me. Sure, you could hire a student, but you're not gonna get that from them, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I have had a full-time job for two years of my entire adult life. Yep. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> I love the term my adult life. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I've always been an entrepreneur or someone that was like piecing together income from multiple things. Mm -hmm. I, 
as a visionary, I like to do different things. I have too many ideas. I have, you know, it's like all of it. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ADHD, anyone? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I see yeah. hands in the audience. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and, and then also being in the sexuality field, um, sexuality is very devalued in this culture. So it just, you know, just as art and performance, I think, get devalued, and even our work as filmmakers over and over gets devalued. Um, you know, a lot of colleagues in my field will say, oh, but, but it's so important. People need, this is life-saving information. We need to teach these, these people about sexuality and how to take care of themselves. I'm like, yeah, exactly. And, you know, so th there's this idea of like, oh, so we should just give it away to everybody. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, heart surgeons definitely do something that is really valuable and could be life-saving. But do you think heart surgeons are saying, you know what, come on in, we'll do this surgery for free. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. no, that is not happening. Mm -hmm. So um, I've actually been a voice in the sexuality field for that, uh, that it's really up to us to name the value and to help people understand the value of what we do. Um, they're not going to figure it out if we're not speaking it. So I do think that that comes back to us, uh, you know, kind of the journey you were talking about, Renee, and, and coming to that for yourself. We all have to do that. Mm -hmm. Whether you're an entrepreneur or you're going into your boss and asking for a raise or whatever it is, if you don't believe it, um, then you're not going to get that response from other people. 100%. So I think, like, in terms of agency, the trade off for me for not having the same amount of retirement or benefits or whatever is that I get to travel whenever I want. I take summers off if I want to. I, you know, I work my, I work my schedule and my life so that I can actually spend time doing the things that I want to be doing yeah. in the places that I want to be yeah. for the most part. Yeah. It's not to say <laughs> I, every, every time. But. Yeah. I love that and I love the, the concept of like looking back and seeing how we've grown and that's like our form to help us be even more convicted. I talk a lot about conviction and how that helps us move forward and make more decisions in our business and in life and I, I would love to hear from you ladies as well and maybe also too where you felt convicted in something that you've done so it's propelled you forward. So my, the film here is, was stemmed from a breaking news assignment. I've worked for a newspaper for eight years, but I've always known that I wanted to be in the filmmaking space. I wanted to do in-depth projects that took a lot of time that would also demand a lot of time to be watched because I'm competing against clickbait and you know 30 second videos of dogs. So <laughs> it took, or cats, you know, or cats <laughs> whatever you want. Um, but it took a lot, I knew this is what I wanted to do, and I knew this was the story I wanted to do it for. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was really important to advocate constantly to my editors who were like, you have to go to Tennessee again, why? Why do you need to do that? And I was like, you don't have to pay me. I know that's not what I should be advocating for, <laughs> but the thing is, this meant so much to me, and I knew what I needed to do in order to get to the next level, and that's turned me into a Swiss Army knife. I did all of it, it was, which, you know, running audio, doing an interview, and running a camera, I don't advise it, but it's what I had to do in order to get here, and it's how I'm starting to grow and see like where I wanna be and what do I wanna specialize in, but I wouldn't have known unless I just did it. Mm -hmm. And so it was really important for me, and I'm so thankful that the editors gave me the time and said yes, but I kept whispering, yes, 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 please, no, I'm just gonna do it, I'm not gonna wait. Mm -hmm. and. I don't work at the newspaper anymore, I'm here, and now I'm, I'm able to do more projects. And it took a lot of that stepping and just taking the risk. Yeah, it's an amazing story that I think hopefully we can all relate to as well as, as saying yes to ourselves. I think it's so powerful. Stephanie and Kelly, do you have anything you wanted to add? Or? Um, yeah, I guess for me, I, <laughs> the background's a little bit different. So my background is, I'm a corporate lawyer from New York City originally, <laughs> so the, the money part has actually been a different a different aspect. That part's always been easy. You get paid to have an absolutely miserable life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is the trade-off. Um, agency in different but ways, right? What's harder is to make a difference. Mm. To be, especially as a woman, to be in a room where you're one of 50 men, and when you speak, you're the sometimes the only one with that opinion. You also may use instincts such that you're the only person who sees something first. 
And when they see it two years later, everyone's like in disbelief. And you've been running around saying this over and over. So I actually, and I, I do this a lot. I, I'm a lawyer, I leave, I go do something in sports, then I want money, I do something, I come back, I then go do something in entertainment, I go back, because it helps fund it. Mm -hmm. um, but most recently I realized that I can't get that fulfillment in the, the corporate world the way it exists today. Mm -hmm. And one person, it's really hard to make an impact, it's really hard to make a change, and I will fight. I mean, I'm not somebody who's quiet. I've never sat in a room and just said, okay, you know, I've always been vocal, but it's, it gets exhausting. And that's why I founded the businesses that I did because I want to be able to make a difference and make a change, make an impact, tell stories, whatever it is, or tell other people's stories. So a big part of what I'm doing is financing and funding documentary filmmakers so that they can tell their stories and doing it in non-traditional ways so that they don't have to only get the stories made that somebody else sees value in or that a corporation sees value in or that the person with enough money to fund it sees value in. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's what's really been inspiring to me. Mm. I wish I knew, I had to take all the sounds off my sound pad because one time I was doing an interview and my voice turned to a robot and I didn't know how to turn it off, but I wish I could do the like sound effects like boo, 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 or like, <laughs> can we all cheer for something? I mean, that talk about a mic drop moment and exactly entrepreneurship, right, is being a speedboat versus a cruise ship and getting to make a difference. And I think it's so important and lo I'd love to reflect back to you the fact that you're able to help others and that you're you're dipping in both because you see this bigger mission, vision, and message. And that's just so inspiring. So thank you for sharing that and doing what you do. Kelly, would you like to share I'd your like story? to piggyback off of yeah. what she said a little bit because um, <clears throat> lately my conviction is trying to find new ways to get these films out. Mm -hmm. um, and I love the fact that you're helping with funding because that is, in my world, one of the hardest things that to figure out. And um, I'm, I'm exploring, there's a new media landscape that, I mean, digital, you have so many different avenues to get stories out there. I've even really did some social experiments with TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, it's just fascinating, like, and my, my thing is, I know, don't laugh, don't laugh. <laughs> no, 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 oh, no, we no, no, we have our But, but there's <laughs> so oh many different ways and so many, there's such an audience and there has to be other ways than just how the machine works right now. Right. And so my whole thing and my conviction right now is to find new ways to do indie, like true indie stories, get the stuff out there, not having to wait like months for funding, not having to, you know, like and finding distribution, other distribution um, ways because I think everything's so filtered mm -hmm. um, in the industry, in all industries, you have a couple people saying yes to projects. And look what we have, a whole bunch of remakes because it's safe, don't get me started. Now I'm off on a tangent <laughs> right now. Uh, now but, I'm whoop, whoop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing, I mean, and as a woman in this industry, you're putting another barrier because all of the decision, not all of them, a lot, a majority of the decision makers who are saying, yeah, let's do that, or yeah, are men, you know? And I would just, I, I really, my vision is to find new ways to get these stories told, and I love to research subcultures and untold stories, and you know, these people, even like in the Midwest, there's so many stories that haven't been told, and so I'd love to find new ways to fund that and to distribute it. So if there's any distributors or funders, come talk to me. Okay, yeah. thanks. Or, or click the link. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, we need yeah. to talk. Yeah, we need yeah, to talk. We got to talk. <laughs> so, so for anybody who listens to my podcast, you can hear and imagine how big I'm smiling right now because one of my things is I'm a connector. So when I see this, I'm like, ladies, we got to hook you two up right now. Make things happen. Make magic happen. Yeah. I, I think it's so beautiful. And again. Ladies have just teed me up perfectly here. This conversation is spreading everywhere because uh, I, I work with actually a photographic artist in our practice. So yes, we do our podcasts and we launch podcasts, but we actually, now we're not documentarians, but we make little films, little founder films for our, for our clients so that they can spread their mission and message and articulate it. You know how it is to articulate in an interview versus 
holding up your phone and doing what everybody else is doing to try to share what you do for your business. And so what we've noticed is it's just all the same noise. In different industries, it's a lot of the same noise, right? But we have these places that we can leverage where people are, their eyes are there. You worked in a traditional space. I've talked a lot with the television networks and things like that. Of They're struggling too because I don't watch live TV. I like to watch things like this. And so it's fascinating that we're all craving something else, but we're trying to, to leverage platforms in new ways because what we want and what we have access to are not in alignment. And so can you guys talk to me a little bit about how you're breaking through? I know, Kelly, you, you're telling us a little bit more, and I feel like we have a TikTok conversation. I'm not on TikTok. I'm an Instagram Reels person, but I'm trying to not be on, on, on it so much. So how are you with the, the beautiful work that is more than five seconds long, like the goldfish attention span that we're hearing? It's long-form, beautiful content that deserves to be heard. How are you breaking through the new landscape of media, this distribution that is challenging, but eyeballs are there? I know you had a point about TikTok. Do you I do, but I don't want to go first. I okay. went first last time. I want to share, share I the, mean, whole, that's the whole basis of why I, funded, I founded Beta Candy. Mm -hmm. It's all of these issues in terms of distribution and what gets made. I mean, they're very real. They exist. And, you know, I'm someone who actually I made a film about Formula One. Mm -hmm. I had access to every single distribution platform and conversations with every single one of them. The decision being made, it's not really relevant to our projects. It's not being done that way. So how do you break through that? You know, it's it, in each one of us, everyone's doing it on their own. So you're doing it for your film and then the one person who gets success. So um, my films do have distribution in Europe, but the, the point is how do we do things collectively? Yeah. And it really is back to your whole point on agency, needing that collective input from people, need, you can't really do it on your own. You need something, you need some funding. Um, I can tell you, I had a, I have a fund mm -hmm. behind me that I can, certain films, certain projects could get made, others not. Mm -hmm. Very arbitrary. So how do we get all the projects made and all the things done that the people actually want to see? Right. That's the, the challenge. So that's what the whole purpose of Beta Candy. So I started off in Dora Media, it was, we're gonna just make some films, I'll produce this stuff, it's Formula One. But as I realized that and started working with more of the filmmakers, because I'm the lawyer type, you guys are the creative type. So as I started working with them and realizing the stories that they want to tell, that they can tell, and how you could get that into some details about you know, the stories that you've all done, and you could dive into that. And, and that's what's really interesting. And a lot of us don't have that ability, but we appreciate it. We appreciate that art. We want to see it. Yeah. And so from my perspective, it's, Let's make sure that the audience is getting to see what they want to see, that it's made for people, for everyone. And I think we're moving out of that world where it used to be just a few people making decisions and deciding what kind of the crowd wants to see. And that's a little bit of what social media offers to us. Right. It's just starting to open it, but it's, it's changing. We are not there, which is why we're all experiencing this. We, it is changing and we're figuring out new ways to do things. Um, but that is the whole reason why I'm even here right now mm -hmm. is because of the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love your mention of like we have to do things collectively. I'm a firm believer in that we all, when we link our arms together, we're so much stronger. And so even just all of us linking our arms together here and spreading the message is huge. But I love this concept and I'm sure anybody listening or anybody else watching can uh, hook up with all of you ladies to, to link our arms together and continue this part of the conversation too, right? I think we can all agree on, on that. I think it's so important. So I love that you had that sentiment. Both other sides of the table, Renee and Meg. I was just gonna <laughs> piggyback again on that. <laughs> um, I think right now, like you were saying, I think it is kind of like the wild, wild west right now where people are slowly, like they're, they're trying to figure out new ways because the other, the Hollywood way is not working. So I think it's happening right now. And like you said, collectively doing it, figuring out that business model that works where, where uh, you know, these, these indies can make some money off of it, can find people an audience, other distribution platforms, that's, that's really, I think, the key to it. And if we all just come together, especially as women, I mean, we can, we can change it. 
We have a sign um, in our studio, and uh, it actually says, where there's a woman, there's a way. So I feel like we all need to get a picture <laughs> next to it at some point, because it's certainly a sentiment in this conversation. Yeah. Go ahead, Renee, if you'd like yeah. to go on that or imagine. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess what I was going to say is, you know, we're a part of a community that is looking at new distribution models for film. And that's, I mean, nobody knows where it's going right now. Even the, like, the highest, highest up, nobody knows where documentary is going at this point. Um, like, I think one or two deals were even made at Sundance this year. Like, that's just been unheard of. It used to be that, like, if you got into a big film festival like that, you were going to make a deal. You know, somebody was going to pick up your film, and that's not even the case anymore. Um, and then not to mention that, you know, our film came out in the year that, like, three years of films came out because everybody that had a film in 2020 and 2021 held it. Mm -hmm. So um, so just the, the sheer amount of good films out there right now that we just can't even possibly... Uh, consume <laughs> all, of, all of the films we want to consume like is just unprecedented it's it's never we've never seen this before um so everybody in the industry is like we don't know we just don't know you know and and it's just hilarious to me when people are like oh you you have a documentary feature oh is it gonna be on netflix you know it's like no <laughs> like, <laughs> For multiple reasons, no. Uh -huh. um, we are going to be on PBS next year. We are very excited yeah. about that. Yeah, we got greenlit for PBS. But, um, but yeah, I think this idea that like, well, obviously the place you're going to go is one of the big streamers, and that's just not that's not the only way. We have to be thinking in much more innovative ways about how to get our films out there. Um, I'm speaking at a bioethics conference next week and and showing pieces of our film and raising the issue with bioethicists who then hopefully will bring us to their colleges and universities where we actually get paid to screen our film and to speak. And so that's kind of what we're looking at right now and um, working on a college and university tour, which has its own has its own pitfalls. Um, it, it's a lot of red tape. You're dealing with a lot of decision makers and, and it's a lot of work. Um, but that is a good place for our film at this stage of distribution um, and, and where we're going to get the right people seeing it. And we have yet to be invited by a medical school, but we do hope that a medical mm -hmm. school will Anybody invite us. Anybody listening? <laughs> this is the nursing this program design. seem to get what we're talking about. The medical school is not yet on board, but we're, holding, yet. we're holding out hope I like for that. that. Yet. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to talk about the TikTok debacle? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know about that. Um, yeah, I mean, we're both older, and we both, like, are not glued to our phones social media-wise. I mean, uh, as a person that's in front of screen a lot editing, that's, like, the task I don't want to do. So it's been interesting. Like, I mean, when you brought that up, it's like, how do you get, you know, watching who responds on Facebook, who, in, you know, responds on Instagram, who responds on TikTok? We do have all three. Um, and it's tiring that stuff. Um, so yeah, as she said, like we're doing more of the educational, organizational, self-distribution route right now. I mean, I don't even know if we're going to sign with a regular distributor just because the amount of money that they take and you get is so little. Uh, but it is a lot of work. It's very tiring. Um, I don't know, do we want to talk about the TikTok or no? Uh, this is now getting so mysterious <laughs> for people. No, I mean, okay, like, so, okay, what we can have, what we can say is, so, you know, obviously when you do a film, you get releases and all that stuff. Okay. Mind you, our film, uh, we started working on, or you started working on it, what, 2005-ish? You know, yeah, something like that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So we were like, oh, let's create a buzz about the film. Let's do little snippets of the film on TikTok. Well, we did, and uh, we, the person will remain nameless, but a person that was in our film got it. And mind you, to give you a little setup, so she did one of these, you know, um, public exams while a patient was under anesthesia because that's what her residency was prescribing for her to do. She felt very awful about it. She admits this on film, but she just got attacked on TikTok. And we just, like, within, like, I don't know, how many did it get? You were the one that had the numbers. It had like 500,000 views in three days. Yeah. And, you sure. know, and I mean, I shut down the comments after like 900 and some odd comments. Um, but, I mean, we realized there was a big lesson there of like, mm -hmm. yeah, we've spent all these years making this film so people can understand the context mm -hmm. of why does something so egregious still happen. And that goes right back to the dawn of gynecology 
and the abuse of black enslaved women who did not get to consent, who were experimented on, who were violated over and over again so that gynecology could then be born as a discipline. So to me, as someone that knows that history, and then that's really the thesis of our film, is like we need to look at that history and then see that's exactly how we got where we are. I mean, most people are shocked to, to hear that that happens in today's day and age, but you know, there was research just last year that showed that 84% of students have done at least one exam on an anesthetized patient, most without consent. That has a direct legacy. So, um, so taking something like that out of context where people didn't have this context for how students have been indoctrinated mm -hmm. was problematic. So that was a big lesson for us to learn that, um, that we actually have to be very careful which stories we take and put into a little two minute moment, or that one was I think 35 seconds, yeah. you know, like you, seconds. we can't, there's a reason why it's a film. There's a reason why it's a, it's a feature film. It takes, like people, we want people to understand the whole picture, mm -hmm. um, but we are, using the film legislatively. We are advocating for legislation in many states. We're starting our advocacy here in Ohio. Ohio mm -hmm. does not have a law protecting all of y'all who live here. So, um, so we have been use, utilizing the film in that way as well. And that's a big part of why we made the film. Yeah. So going back to like, what are we doing with distribution? You know, we're, we're social justice filmmakers. Um, our film is, we didn't make our film because we thought it was a cool story. We made the film because there was like a bigger change that we want to see in the culture and film is a really powerful way to make that happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love what you said about content. I, I talk about that a lot about like your content needs to have context. It's like, it's nice that it's a play on words, but it's so true because in watching your film, I am assuming I think I know which person you're speaking of and in the film you could tell that she felt like didn't want to do it, but she didn't have a choice. Like that's how it was done. So I can imagine how that would be jarring out of the sense. And but how are you going to know that? Because you have the context in your head. And so I think it's a beautiful sentiment for anybody listening, whether you're you're sharing a film or you're trying to express what you do in your business. People can't they don't know all the pieces of the puzzle. And so and trying to fit that is a job in itself, right? It's a whole other thing that you have to think about and do instead of getting to do the work you love, right? So I think that's a beautiful sentiment. Can I just add something about the TikTok? <laughs> the um, TikTok, I, love I, I totally, I understand how that could happen because, you know, they take, you can get canceled in TikTok in like five seconds. Um, but they are beta testing a program, TikTok series, and I'm, uh, I've been looking into it, I've gone to the office hours and stuff like that, where you can't, it's, it's a paywall, so you can put stuff on there and, I, and it's much longer format. I, I'm not saying it's good because I haven't completely tested it out, but I, I think that could be something interesting. It, it may or may not work, but hey, it's another distribution thing that I'm willing to try. I think that's so interesting. Um, a friend of mine was working on a, a show of her own and she was going down a bunch of the routes of you know typical like typical distribution, trying to get on one of the regular channels or things like that. And she was hitting a bunch of walls and all the things. And I just had this like download or this vision of her make, just do it yourself, have the agency, do it yourself, film it yourself. Like it was more of a kind of dating show style. So she could just put it out there. And I had this TikTok show thought in my head, just like, well, if that's what people are consuming, you can give them the bite size and send them to a YouTube or a Vimeo or whatever you want to do to share it. So I think it's interesting that we are seeing, you're seeing some support in that way. Now, is it the best version? Who knows, to be determined, but it is interesting to see that, that part of the landscape. Yeah. I think it's also another way to get um, your your story out there, to get your points out there. It, it is powerful in getting conversations started. Mm -hmm. You can even put your, you know, film yourself talking about something and a whole conversation will start. So I am fascinated by that, but yeah, I mean, as far as taking a clip and getting it out of context, I completely see where that was uh, probably pretty frightening. <laughs> it was a hard lesson to learn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I love it. Well, as we're wrapping up, ladies, I'd love to talk about 
building this out with action, right? So we have the agency, you've gotten to take the agency to share your stories. What is some action that you'd like people to take as they leave hearing about you as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a filmmaker, as a creative, as a storyteller? If you could each go down the line, and as you're doing that too, if you can end with your information. I'll have everything linked below, but so everybody can know where to find you and, and how to take further action to support. Do you want to just go down the line yeah, straight? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Go Kelly. down the line. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, you want you want the action? What was the? Yeah. Okay. Action the action and, and okay. Things, whatever action. you feel good with. Yeah. All right. Um, Very funny. I didn't mean to make it. That <laughs> action. <laughs> so um, I guess to wrap my my stuff up, um, I have Wolf Vision Productions. Uh, WolfVisionProductions.com. I'm dabbling in a whole bunch of different things: documentary shorts. Um, podcasts, scripted. Um, I'm really into just getting an audience and, and finding new ways. Um, like I said before, I have a couple podcasts I want to do a little shameless plug. Uh, let's talk about death. Um, two twin brothers, one's a funeral director, one is a grieving psychologist, and we have some really good conversations on that. I'm a producer on that one. And then one is getting launched very soon in October, Uber Wisdom. And that also, I have a short film in a uh, film, Fresh Coast Film Festival, and we have a companion podcast to go along with it, and it's healing arts, self-love, women empowerment, baby. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you. I appreciate you having me on this. Yeah, and I love, just side note, here's my business mind, the distribution there, because I did notice that the film and the podcast cover are the same, so that's really, really smart of you. Yeah. There's trying it out, I love it. Go ahead, Meg. Um, well, action-wise, I also just think is a blanket statement, I think it's so important, and this is the audience that preach into the choir, is to engage in films and to watch things that are not on the top 10 list on Netflix, to go to these kind of festivals, to, to learn about the process. I come from the family of accountants, um, and I, my brother and my dad are always like, I just don't understand, like, how does this work? And it's like, let me explain, let me pull back the curtain, let me show you what it looks like to actually make a film, because I think the more we understand the process, the value, the time, the film here is so much more different. And I think it's so important we, we appreciate that art and the value of it. Um, I'm an independent filmmaker and visual journalist, so my work is kind of all over the place. Um, but you can follow on Instagram and um, Meg Vocal Photo. That's me. Love it. Thanks, Meg. Go ahead, Stephanie. Um, so I guess this for me again comes back to what I'm trying to do with Beta Candy and what I'm looking to do in the near future. It hasn't fully been launched yet in terms of the audience participation and investment, but that's the whole goal behind it is to take the pressure off of the creatives and the filmmakers and let people like me deal with the finance and the money and the people that the audience can actually have an, a, a voice, an impact on what gets made and share their thoughts on it and say, yeah, we really want to see this film and then have some benefit of the upside. And I think collectively we will then have more power and influence than some of the other platforms who say, well, I don't think our audience wants to see this. I can say actually, to the contrary, <laughs> this is the, your audience has already invested in this and they're the ones making this film and they're the ones gonna make the money off of it. So they will pay to see it on Netflix because that's going back mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. um, so that for my action item is to pay attention, to go out there and look at that, the alternative investments, because this it really would be one of those things. Um, and then once it is, then I can't talk freely because it's governed by the SEC. But for now, <laughs> for now do you see, this is why a lawyer has to get involved. <laughs> in this. I was just about all the things that I'm yeah, this, about. this is why it, it is very legal fight. It, it's all the stuff that you guys actually hate. Um, and look, my, my best friend is a filmmaker and it's, we've always had this where I'm like, give me, just let me do the fun stuff. Can I just, I just need a moment, like not mm. looking at color and just, can I just sit over there and just do some contracts? <laughs> like, like I love release agreements. Like those are that's just it's my it's my safe spot. So, so this is where it's like when we when we meet up, and that's why it's working with other women and people like you guys. I'm like, this shouldn't be this hard. I should be I should be getting you guys money, mm -hmm. and not just the Formula One guys or you know the the other things that I'm I'm working with. So that's what Beta Candy is all about. It's it's all about 
being different, putting the power back into the audience and the investors, and being able to make the projects and films people want to see. So that's my action item for, I guess, everyone. Um, stay tuned to Beta Candy because that is where we're going. I would assume too, if anybody who's listening with the links that I send below, even if you don't have a specific way they could take action, but if they're like, I'm interested, you have some wait list or something, right? That, Absolutely. That you, can direct yes. them. you could have a conversation. Yes. I love that. <laughs> Go ahead, Imagine. I mean, we've, we've been a big part of a movement. Um, join our movement, be a part of this. You know, we get to get laws passed in all 50 states banning the use of anesthetized patients or any patient. Um, for these intimate exams. And um, as I said, we're here in Ohio. Um, there's just been a, a new bill that's being put forward. The bill isn't good enough. The bill is not going to protect you all. So, um, so we're doing a ton of advocacy work around this all over the country. We're also working in New Mexico where I live right now. We're working, um, we're, I just testified for Massachusetts two weeks ago. We're working on getting a law, strong, a stronger law in Massachusetts passed. So, um, um, and we passed the strongest law in the country in Colorado this year, and that was we signed. Co we co-wrote that yeah. law from scratch. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, it has whistleblower protection that no other law has for students or nurses or other medical personnel who witness things, so that they are protected if they say something, because that's why these practices have been perpetuated for so long. So um, we've got two change.org petitions, one for New Mexico has about 158,000 signers now. Um, our petition in Massachusetts has like 59,000 signers. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that care about this and are saying something and want to do something. So you can find out about all of that at atyourcervixmovie.com. Uh, we are at your cervix movie on almost all of the socials. So we're very easy to find. Come join us, be a part of this. And if you wanna work specifically in Ohio this year, Ohio is one of our um, priority states this year um, as a state that has several medical schools where we know this is happening. Um, I've met many students in Ohio who are experiencing tremendous moral injury over what they're being asked to do as students. So. Um, we are prioritizing all of the states that have the most medical schools right now, and Ohio is one of them. So please join us in any way you can. And if you can just support our legislative work financially with donations, we welcome that too. So that's what we're up to. Thank I mean, you for the work that you're doing. Yeah, you said it all. So we have business cards if you want to come talk to us <laughs> afterwards. Like but it. yeah, what we found to be really helpful is if peop local people help. Like we're working with a bunch of local people in Massachusetts. We worked with locals in Colorado. So we can't just come in and do this all by ourselves. Right. We definitely need the su support uh, and energy of constitu constituents. So yeah, if you are interested, uh, please come talk to us. Awesome. Well, thank you ladies so much. I so enjoy talking with all of you. Having live audiences has been fantastic and I really appreciate it. Yes, go Can we it. go down the line? Everybody says what their film is again and when it's playing next. Great idea, please. Yeah. Kelly. Okay, um, mine is Junk Genius and it's playing at 5.30, so hopefully it's not 5.30 right now. Um, <laughs> 49, we're good. Okay. You're all right. so good. Yeah. But, and also okay. tomorrow, or no, I'm sorry, Saturday um, at the park, and if it rains, it's in here Okay. at 11.30, I think. A.M., yeah. yeah. And Taken, the American Hostage Story, is um, aired earlier today, but will also be on Saturday at the uh, Methodist Church. I cannot remember the time, but it will be Saturday. <laughs> Williams and Mansell, Red 5, is airing tonight at 7 p.m. at the Chagrin Little, little theater? Valley. Valley, little theater. Valley, yeah. little, yeah. 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 little theater. Yeah. Right, right. Like, that effect. like a minute walk from here. Yeah. <laughs> Which is awesome. Feels like everything is a minute walk. <laughs> yeah. uh, we are at your cervix and we are online. So awesome. you can catch us online in the comfort of your own home. <laughs> <laughs> or so wherever. You can watch it again and again. <laughs> start telling more people. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.